Well, welcome back to theCUBE here at AWS reInvent 22 as we continue our coverage here, the AWS Global Showcase, the Startup Showcase. Uh, John Wall is here hosting for theCUBE as we've been here all week. Hope you're enjoying our coverage here. This is day three, by the way. We're wrapping it up shortly. Uh, with us to talk about what's going on in the, kind of the hotel world in IT and what's going on in the cloud, especially at IHG, is Eric Norman, head of infrastructure, architecture, and innovation at the IHG Hotels and Resorts. Eric, good to see you, sir. Oh, thank you, and thank you for inviting me. You uh, bet, glad to have you aboard here on theCUBE. First time, I think, too, by the way, right? It is, and uh, can I uh, just to tell you who IHG is real yeah, quick? Yeah, wait a second. First, we oh, have another okay. guest <laughs> I'm going to introduce, too. Uh, Rod Stuhlmuller, who is the Vice President and of Solutions Marketing at Aviatrix. And Rod, right. good to see you, sir. Thanks a lot. Now let's talk about I there IHG, okay, if well, you will. Okay, well, great. Uh, well, IHG's a, uh, a hospitality company that's been around for 200 years that has uh, 17 brands globally in a, over 100 countries. Uh, we sleep you know, up, could, uh, up to uh, 888,000 people a night. Uh, so it's a pretty large company that we compete with you know, all the hotel companies globally. Um, so let's talk about your, your footprint right now in, in terms of what your needs are because you've mentioned obviously a lot of, you have a lot of customers' needs. You have a lot of internal stakeholder needs. Yeah. So just from that perspective, how are you balancing out you know, the products you want to launch as opposed to the, on the development side and the maintenance side? Yeah, I mean, um, we, ha we have focused our, our attention to our, our guests and our hotels globally and, uh, and taking technology and from a f uh, foundation, getting it at, at the edge uh, so that way the consumer and the uh, hotel owner can deliver a quality product to uh, a guest experience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we uh, have moved larger, a large uh, deployment of our mission critical applications over the last five years really mm -hmm. of uh, moving into more SaaS and uh, uh, infrastructure like AWS and GCP and, uh, and leveraging their global scale to be able to deliver uh, at the edge or get closer to the edge. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've, you know, I'm pretty sure you've seen, you know, kind of people building, you know, mission critical apps, you know, probably in the last three years, it's probably uh, escalating and more of like a hockey stick of moving stuff. Uh, I'd, I'd love to hear what, you know, Aviatrix is seeing. Oh yeah. No, we're, we're seeing that quite a bit, right? As people move into the cloud, it's now business critical applications that are going there. So good enough isn't good enough anymore. Right. It has to be, a, you know, a powerful capability that's business critical, can support that, give people the ability to troubleshoot it when something goes wrong. Uh, and then multi-cloud, you mentioned a couple different cloud companies. A lot of enterprises are moving to multiple clouds and you don't want to have to do it differently in every cloud. You mm -hmm. want an infrastructure management layer that allows you to do that across yeah. clouds. So how do you go about that, you know, deciding what goes where? I mean, it sounds like a simple question, but, but if you are dealing in a lot of different kinds of environments, different needs and different requirements, whatever, you know, how are you sorting out, um, delegating, you know, you know, you're 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 going to be working here. You're going to be working there. Yeah. So we built uh, some standards base uh, that says you know certain types of apps. You know, transactional base going to go to this cloud provider, and uh, data analytics is going to go to uh, another another cloud provider based on our decision of key uh, capability, native native capability, mm -hmm. and uh, and also coverage. You know, because we're in China. Right. You know, you know, I've, I've got to be able to get into China and, and build not only a network that can support that, but also uh, business apps locally to com meet, compete with compliance, regulatory type activities. Um, I mean, even in, in the U.S. market, I got you know uh, California uh, privacy laws. You know, right. you, you have globally, right. you've got to deal with um, getting data applications into uh, uh, compliance. Uh, for those uh, globally, right? Yeah, I was going to say, you got that compliance slash governance yeah. issue, huge issue, yep. I would think, for you. You got to decide who's going to get to what, when, and also we have to meet certain regulatory standards, as you pointed out. And not just there, but you've got a, a European footprint, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're yep. global. Yep. So, um, so, you know, handling that kind of uh, scope or scale, what kind of nightmares or challenges does that provide you and how's Aviatrix helping you solve that? Yeah, uh, in the early days, we, you know, we were using cloud native you know, constructs for uh, networking and a little bit of a security type uh, angle to it. Mm -hmm. uh, what we found was you, know, you can't get the automation you need, you can't get the, uh, the scalability, because um, you know, we're, we're trying to shift left our, 
you know, our DevOps and our ability mm -hmm. to deploy infrastructure. Uh, Aviatrix had come in and, and provided a, uh, a solution that gets us there quicker than anybody else. Uh, it's allowed us to uh, you know, build a mesh network across all our uh, regions globally, um, able to deploy you know, new, new landing zones or you know, mm -hmm. public cloud fairly quickly with my uh, you know, networking construct. Uh, we also, uh, we found that because we are a multi-hybrid cloud, mm -hmm. we, we, we inter introduced um, on the edge uh, a, a new network. We, we had to introduce a performance hub uh, architecture that's using uh, Equinix um, that sits in every region, uh, in every public cloud, in partner, because you know, all our partners. You know, we, we've moved a lot of stuff to SaaS. You know, mm -hmm. Amadeus is our uh, centralized reservation system. Mm -hmm. That's our key, you know, uh, sure. you know reservation tool. Uh, it's sor sourced out, I need to bring them in, and I need to get data that's closer to uh, where, in a region, to where it needs to land, so I can process it. Right, so. yeah. it's, and it's a big world out there too. I mean, you're, you're nodding your head, Rod. So, um, talk about, if you would, share some of the, the Aviatrix experience in that regard, when you have a client like this that has these you know, multinational uh, locations and, and yet um, you're looking for some consistency and some uniformity, you, don't, you know, you can't, be reinventing the wheel every time something right. pops up, right? Right, no, and it, it, it's about agility and speed and you know being able to do it uh, with less people than you used to have to do things, right? You, you want to be able to give the developers what they need when they need it. There was a time when people were going around IT, swiping their credit card and, and saying, IT doesn't give me what I need. And so cloud is supposed to change that. So we're trying to deliver the ability to do that for the developers um, a lot faster than had been done in the past, but at the same time giving the enterprise the controls, the security, the mm -hmm. compliance that they need. And sometimes those things got in the way, but now we're building systems that allow that to happen at, at the pace that developers need it to happen. But yeah, what Rod said about, uh, yeah, you know, one of the big things, you, know, you sparked my uh, thinking uh, is, it also, you know, building a uh, overlay of uh, the cloud native construct uh, allows for visibility that, you know, you didn't have. Mm -hmm. You know, from a developer mm -hmm. or even a, a operations, day two operations, now you get that visibility into the network space um, and controls uh, and management of that space a lot easier now, mm -hmm. you yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, business critical applications, right? People, the people, the business does not care about networking, right? They right. see it as uh, electricity. And if it's down, somebody else's problem to fix it. But the people who do need to keep it up, they need the telemetry. They need the ability sure. to understand, are we trending in the wrong direction? Should we be doing something so that we don't get to yep. the point where it goes down? And that's the kind of information that we're providing in this multi-cloud environment. You mentioned Equinix. We we just have a partnership with Equinix yep. where we're extending the cloud operational model that Aviatrix delivers all the way yep. out to Equinix and that global fabric that you're talking about. So this is allowing the uh, pe the comp companies to have that visibility, that operational ability all the way globally. Yeah, because you know when you start building all these clouds now in multi regions, multiple AZs or different cloud providers or SaaS providers, um, you're moving data all over the place, mm -hmm. and if you don't have a single pane of glass to see that entire network and be able to uh, route stuff accordingly, it's going to be a zoo. Mm -hmm. It's I mean, not going to work. We were, I was talking earlier with, with uh, another guest, and we were just talking about uh, companies, in your case, like, like IHG, kind of knowing what you have. And it sounded like such a basic thing. He said, but yeah, you'd be surprised how many people don't know what they have. <laughs> yeah. And so they're trying to provide that visibility and, and, and awareness. So, so I'm kind of curious because you're just the next interview up. So sorry, Ken, uh, but, but do you know what you have? I mean, are you learning what you have? Or is, how do you identify, prioritize? What, how valuable is this asset as opposed to this can wait? I mean, is that still an ongoing process for you? It, it's definitely an ongoing process. I mean, we've done over the last three years of constantly assessing all our inventory of what we have, um, making sure we had the right mo roadmaps for each of the apps and products mm -hmm. that we have, because mm -hmm. we've turned to more of a 
product driven organization and a DevOps and uh, we're, we're moving more and more uh, product teams onto that DevOps process yep. so we can shift left uh, a lot of the activities that a uh, developer in the past had to go over a fence to ask for uh, help and, yep. and you know, kind of the automation of the network and the security built in mm -hmm. allows us to be able to shift that left. I did that, Eric, you were saying yep. too, three years, right, you've been on, on this path. Yep. Um, going back then to 2019, all right, pandemic hits, right? Uh, the world changes. How has that affected this three year period for you and where are you in terms of where you expected to be and and yep. and then what your what are your headlights seeing down the road as to what your your eventual journey, how you want that to end? Uh, I, probably the biggest story that we have a success story is when the pandemic did happen, you know, all our call centers, all agents had to go home. Mm -hmm. Um, we were able within 30 days be able to bring up remote desktops, you know, workspaces and AWS and give access to globally in China and in Singapore and uh, in the Americas. It's no small you know, task there, you know, that's you know, for sure. So we built a desktop, certified it, and, uh, and agents were able to uh, answer calls for guests. Um, yeah. you, know, you know, so it's, it was a huge success to us. Sure. Um, it did slow down, I mean, during the pandemic, it did slow us down. Uh, mm -hmm. from what gets migrated. Um, mm -hmm. You know, our focus is, you know, again, back to what I was saying earlier, is around our guests and our loyalty, and you mm -hmm. know, how do we uh, give value back to our hotel owners and uh, mm -hmm. our guests? And how do you measure that? I mean, how do you know that what you're doing is working with, with that key audience? Um, we measured by, uh, you know, one occupancy. Well, there, and, well there's you know, so many obvious ways. How many people do we have yeah. in the rooms, right? But, but, yeah, but in terms of the interface, in terms of the effectiveness of the applications, in terms of yep. what you're offering. Yeah, it, it, it gets back to uptime of our systems and, yep. you know, being able to deploy an application in multiple regions elevates the availability of uh, the, the product to our guest. Mm -hmm. You know, the longer I'm up, uh, the more revenue I can produce. Right. Um, so, you know, so we, we try to, uh, you know, we measure also guest satisfaction at the properties, you know, uh, them using our tech and that kind of stuff to be so able to- So you're surveying just to find yeah. out what, how yeah. they feel about it. So some- Because we have a lot of tech inside of our hotels right. that allow for, uh, we have IG Connect, which allows for people to move, when, go from one hotel to another and not ask for passwords and, uh, right. you know, that kind of stuff. That, that would not be me, by the yeah. way. I'd be uh, <laughs> begging for help. Uh, let's talk about skills, because sure. I, I hear that a lot. Talked yes. a lot about that this week hearing that, that you know, the advancement of knowledge is obviously a very powerful thing, but it's also a bit of a shortcoming right now in terms of, of having a need for skills and not having that kind of firepower, horsepower on your bench. What, what do you see in that regard? And, and uh, first off, for what do you see about it? And then I'll follow up with Yeah, that. I mean, over our journey, it started off where you didn't have the skills. You, know, you didn't have the skill uh, from an operations, engineering, architecture. So we went on a, uh, you know, you know, how do we build training programs? How do we get, you know, tools to uh, uh, do either virtual training, uh, uh, bring in teachers. Um, we built, um, um, you know, daily or weekly uh, calls where we bring uh, our experts from our vendors in there mm -hmm. to be able to ask questions to help mm -hmm. engineering people or architecture people or operations to ask questions and get answers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we've been on a roll of, you know, upskilling over the last three years, and we continue to drive that. Mm -hmm. You know, we have lunch and learns that we bring people you to. Do, yep. You know, and, and we and we, we ta uh, tailor the, the the content for that uh, training based on what we're consuming and what we're using, as opposed to just a you know a, a broad stroke of uh, public cloud or. It's almost like you don't have to be holistic about it. You yes. just need to know What do you need to know to more make them successful to be better at what you're yes. doing here? Right. Sure. And that's yeah. been a huge. And Rod. And yeah, we, and we have a program called ACE, which is uh, Aviatrix Certified Engineer, and there's a bunch of different types of classes. So if you're a networking person in the past, it's like a CCIE, but we have about 18,000 people over the last three years who have gone through that training. I'm one of them. One of them, right? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And, and th this is not necessarily about Aviatrix. What we're doing is trying to give multi-cloud you know, networking expertise because a lot of the people that we're talking about are coming from the data center world and networking mm -hmm. is so different in the cloud, mm -hmm. we're helping them understand it's not as scary as they might think, <laughs> right? If your whole career has been networking in the data center and all of a sudden there's this cloud thing that you don't really understand, 
you need somebody to help you sort of get there. And we're doing that in a multi-cloud way. And we have all kinds of different levels to teach people how to do infrastructure as code. That's another thing, you know, data center guys, they never did infrastructure as code. It was, you had to bolt it in and plug right. stuff in. Right. But now things are being done much faster with infrastructure as code. And we're teaching people how to do that. Yeah, I mean, uh, yesterday one of the keynotes was about uh, the partner in the, um, the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And uh, they use the image I imagery of a marathon runner. You know, a marathon mm -hmm. runner, yeah, you could do a marathon by yourself, mm -hmm. um, but if you want to improve and become a, uh, a, a great marathon runner, you need a coach, you need nutritionists, you need right. uh, you know, right. people right. running with you to, uh, to, to make that engine go faster right. and, and farther. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. exactly, and uh, you know, having a partner like Aviatrix helps you know, uh, the team to uh, you know, be successful. Well, yeah. it, is, it is a marathon, not a sprint, that's yeah, for right. sure, that's and right. you've been on this kind of three-year jog. Uh, you might feel like you've been running a marathon a little <laughs> bit, but it sounds yeah. like you're really off to a great start and, yeah. and have a pretty good partnership here. So yeah, thank you. congratulations on that. Eric, thank you for being with us, and Rod, same to you. Thank, thank you. you for Appreciate having the you. time here on the AWS Global Showcase. I'm John Walls, you're watching theCUBE. We're out in Las Vegas, and of course theCUBE, as you well know, is the leader in high-tech coverage.